This is again Architecture Daily, giving your daily dose of architecture facts and knowledge. On today's stories, we'll be highlighting the enriched architecture of Nepal and Tibet, Nepal and Tibet's background, influences, elements, characteristics, architecture types, architecture materials, architecture buildings, and architects. Good morning, College of Architecture. I am Chester Espirito, your today's correspondent. This is Architecture Daily, giving your daily dose of architecture facts and knowledge. First on the list, let's dive into Nepal and Tibet's brief background. We have April Savilio for this knowledge. Good day everyone, this is April Precious GMA Stabilio who will be reporting about a brief history of Nepal and Tibet architecture. First, let's talk about Tibet architecture. It is influenced by its own geography, climate, and culture. Tibetan Buddhism and Indian, Mongol, Nepal's, and Tang architecture style. It was traced back to 1,300 years when first Buddhist temples were built at central Tibet. From 7th to 9th century, during the Tubu Kingdom, first palace which was the Rongbuk Lakon was built on a small hill on Yarlong Valley. According to historical records, during the Tibetan Empire, Strokchen Gyampo had built large Jokham Temple, Rambuk Temple, and other 108 temples which is not yet considered at monastery. In 1409, Yaloset Gelug first built Gendan Monastery and the 15th century Drepong Saratashi Columbus Monasteries has been built, reflecting the heyday of temple architecture. According to Sheng Wuli records, up to 11 years of Emperor Yongzhen, there were 2,477 Yaloset monasteries and amounted 31.6 million lamas. The Cultural Revolution of China led the degradation of Buddhist temples, whether intentionally damaged or lack of protection and maintenance. But starting from 1980s, Tibetan started to restore and rebuild damaged temples and receive monastic temples. Next is the Nepal architecture. Nepal architecture is unique strain of art and practically. Since ancient times are known to be very hospitable, adjusting to outsiders and assimilating them easily into their own culture. Nepali temple represents such a tradition with continuous development spanning 1,500 years. Today's multi-tiered temples were referred to the masterful creation of the medieval Obmala dynasty, or much of its grandeur to a thousand-year-long history of high culture, including art and architecture. The Kavi period is often referred to the Golden Time of Nepal, which it has also the active times in the development of religious art and architecture. The temples of Mala, particularly the Dega and Deok, are in a way of summary this active history and the tradition of development. And during 464 AD, the installation of the Victoria Pillar by Manadeva on the hill of Changu represents the earliest landmark of architecture to be found in Nepal. Now, let's proceed to the evolution of architecture in Nepal. First is the Mala centuries. It is only the coming of into power of Jayastiti Mala in 1382 that a period of stability started. It lasted at mid-18th century, when Kathmandu, Bahaktapur, and Patan cities developed as three independent trades. Example of Mala centuries structure is the Dega Temple, which is incorrectly defined as Pagoda. It is developed its own aesthetic quality and construction system from a central cell with a walkway delimited by wall around it to a cell with an external peristyle. Next to Mala centuries is the Daniel Wars. The birth of newer style of architecture also 
arose from the technical and organizational skills of newer society. When Mara Dernestis arrived from 1200s AD, newer society was included in Hindu caste system and many of them became Hindu. Mala dynasties gave them plenty of space for self-expression which during their 500 years of reign, newer people improved and direct their expressive skills toward specific objectives. Example of the newer structure is the Nyatapola in Bhaktapur and Kumbeshwara in Patad that was built also in 18th century. Maintenance and conservation became an important activity to newer workmen who repaired and constructed buildings totally. Um, newer workmen, according to the Yeti Guide or the Kulduta, is a Vishvakama for Hindus, meaning it was referred to Mahabharatas as Master of Thousand Handicrafts, Carpenter of the Gods, and the Builder of their Places Divine. Fashioner of every jewel, first craftsman by whose art men live and whom a great and deathless god they continually worship. Next to the new Mars is the new style. With the one conquest of Kathmandu Valley by the Prit Vinara Vansha during 1751 to 1757, a new historic stylistic period started, which is called the Gurkali period. With the parallel development of newer style that had become manneristic and sometimes eclectic, Hindu Islamic style developed with the reconstruction of many temples and palaces. Many temples have cupolas and external walls plastered with forms typically to the late Islamic period. Example of new style ar architecture is the Hanuman Doka which many of its parts were replaced with new style called the Neoclassical Neo style, which is a great influence from Great Britain. Neoclassical style became well-established and a symbol of power of family who had dominated the country over the entire century. These historic events have resulted in continuity within the newer caste system that is now based on trademarks rather than the traditions. A certain continuity and influence can be seen in some clans while others have experienced certain changes. Modern influences have contributed to the revival of Nepal's cultural heritage with the criteria and methods of intervention being integrated with local traditions as well as modern innovations. This is April Estabilio reporting. Back to you, Chester. Thank you, April. Next on our list are the characteristics and features of Nepal and Tibet architecture. Here's TechStorm to give us this story. Yes, Chester, here are the characteristics and features of Nepal and Tibet architecture. Tibetan architecture is a true reflection of their culture. There is plenty of influences from the nearby cultures like Chinese Tang, traditional Indian Buddhist style, Mongols and Nepalese styles of architecture. When you travel to Tibet, you will find the most unique Tibetan architecture style fascinating. You will find Tibetan military fortifications in the Potala Palace and Sakya Monastery. You will also find the usual Tibetan house with two floors. The lower floors are usually for the livestock and storing house for grains. The upper floors is for the family residence. The residential part of the family consists of the common room for gathering and sleeping, chapel room for deities, kitchen, and a special room for married couples, which is available in only a few houses. The most common site for the Tibetan residential house is the prayer flags on the rooftop. Other features of the Tibetan architecture are build of elevated spot. All houses and monasteries are built on an elevated spot. It prevents the wall from the damage of the water and moisture, and it gives a better view of the areas. Next is faced south. All the windows and doors and the courtyards are all facing the south. The reason it is facing south, you will have more sun time each day especially in the winter. 
classly flat rooftop. All the houses in the entire Tibet Aztec for the Congo region has the flat rooftop. The flat roof conserves heat from the sunshine and also it is easier to clean the rooftop during the snowfall. Now, let's go to the characteristics and features of Nepal architecture. Despite the devastating effects of the 2015 earthquakes, Nepal is still blessed with an astonishing array of ancient temples and palaces, and countless intricate wood carvings and stone sculptures are dotted around its back streets. Walking through the historic towns of the Kathmandu Valley, you will still discover magnificent medieval architecture at every turn. Nepal's Artistic masterpieces are not hidden away in the dusty museums, but are part of a living culture, to be touched, worshipped, feared, or simply paid no heed. Architecture and sculpting arts in Nepal are inextricably intermingled. The finest wood carvings and stone sculptures are often part of a building. Indeed, a temple is simply not a temple without its deity statue, and finely carved adornments. That's all for the characteristics and features of Nepal and Tibet architecture. Back to you, Chester. Thank you, Cheng. Now, let's dive into the influences of Nepal and Tibet architecture, together with their materials on their buildings. Here's April to give us the story. Now, let's proceed to the architectural influences of Nepal and Tibet architecture. First, let's talk about Nepal geography. Nepal is centered in the Kathmandu Valley. It is a landlocked country located in South Asia with China in the north and India in the south, east and west. The country occupies 147,181 square kilometers of land. The country is divided into three geographical regions, the Himalayan region, the Midhill region, and the Tarai region. The highest point is the Mount Everest, which has 8,848 meters, while the lowest is in the Tar Palace of Kenchana, Kalan in Japa, 60 meter high. Neighbor countries are the Tibet, India, and China. Next is the Tibet geography. Tibet consists of high mountains, lakes, rivers lying between Central, East, and South Asia. Today's map shows trend toward considering all of modern China, including Tibet, to be part of East Asia which traditionally Western sources have regarded it as Central Asia. Tibet is often called the roof of the world, comprising tablelands averaging over 4,950 meters above the sea, with peaks at 6,000 to 7,500 meters, including Mount Everest, on the border with Nepal. It was divided into two parts, the lake region and the river region, which spreads out on three sides, the east, south, and west. Let's proceed to the architectural influence, which is the religion. Let's first talk about the Nepal. Hinduism, the dominant religion in Nepal. A remnant of Hindu temples spread throughout the country. With the continuous contact with Hinduism, this leads to the evolution of Shikara temple over time. It developed its own distinct morphology and style. Temples were built in a mixture of Hindu-Islamic styles that was dedicated to the Radhana Krishna cult. Next is the Buddhism. It traces back its roots to the country, with Lumbini in Nepal being the birthplace of Lord Buddha. Next is Islam and Kiratism, ancient religion that is said to have originated in Nepal. It involves worship of ancestors, nature, sun, moon, wind, fire, main pillar of their homes, and gods like Somnima Parohong and Tegra Ningwa Puma. Next is Christianity, which it was reported that there are 380,000 that are Christians. Other religions like Shikism, Jainism, Baha'i, and Judaism. Next is the Tibet religion. Tibet has been Buddhism since its outspread in 8th century at AD. Tibetan Buddhism, which it has four main traditions, which are the following, Tagalogpa, Kagyupa, 
Nyingma pa, and Sakya pa. Next is Bon, the indigenous animist and schamanic belief system of Tibet which in revolves around the worship of nature and claims the predate of Buddhism. Next is Chinese religions. Most of Han Chinese who reside in Tibet practice their native Chinese folk religion or the Shendao, meaning way of gods. Others are the Islam and Christianity. Now let's proceed to Nepal and Tibet climate. First, let's talk about Nepal. In northern Nepal, summers are cool and winters are severe, while in the south, summers are very hot while winters are mild to cold. Nepal has five seasons which are the spring, summer, monsoon, autumn, and winter. In the tariff from southern Nepal, summer exceeds 40 degrees Celsius and 45 in some areas. In winter, temperatures range from 7 Celsius to 23 Celsius. The Himalayas act as a barrier to the cold winds blowing from Central Asia in winter and form the northern boundary for monsoon rains. Now, let's talk to the two Tibet climate. It belongs to the typical high-altitude plateau of climate. Climates are much different in different areas in Tibet and temperatures vary greatly within a single day. Climate is south in southeastern Tibet is gentle and temperate with an average temperature of 8 degrees. In western Tibet, the average temperature is below 0 degrees, while in Lhasa and central part of Tibet, the climate is normal and nice for traveling. Most annual rainfall comes in rainy season that starts from May to September. The last architectural influences that we will discuss is the, is the culture. Let's first proceed to Nepal culture. A prominent factor in Nepalese everyday life is religion. Adding color to the lives of Nepalese are festivals, the year-round which they celebrate with much pomp and ceremony, which food plays an important role in the celebration of these festivals. The diversity of Nepal in terms of ethnicity again makes room for various sets of customs, which it involves the religion of Hindu, Buddhist, and other religions. And did you know that slaughtering of cows is illegal in Nepal? Since cow symbolizes motherhood, charity, and pity. Marriage rules, which is interesting also, which traditional marriages call for deals arranged by parents after the boy and girl come of age. Before entering a temple or a house, shoes must be took off to not pollute the pure interiors with your stained soles. And also, some temples are forbidden to Hindus. And, and most important, food habits are different from different regions and much Nepali food has been influenced by Indian and Tibetan cooking. However, they have unique cuisines which is vast and nutritious. Now let's talk also about the Tibet culture. The region names are useful in contrasting their hydrological structures and also in contrasting the different cultural uses, which is nomadic in the lake region and agricultural in river region. That's all for the architectural influences of Nepal and Tibet. So let's talk about the materials used during Nepal and Tibet architecture. First is the wood. Wood is commonly used as columns, beams, also for doors, windows, and stairs. In Nepal, there is a high quality wood that is very strong and durable, which it can grow to 30 meters high. This is called the sal. The sal used for pillars, struts, beams as well as windows, doors, grates, and moldings. There is a resinous oil obtained from the sal tree, which is called the sal dup, which it protects and conserves the wooden structural and construction elements exposed to open air. There is also another type of wood used in Nepal, which is the guaisasi, lower quality than sal. In Tibet, Gansi is known for its beautiful wooden houses built in range styles and lavishly decorated with wooden ornamentation. Next is the metals where copper, iron, brass, bronze were commonly used. Next materials is the bricks and tiles. Mud bricks for the construction of walls and clay tiles were used on roofs, 
courtyard, pavings, and floor coverings. The type of clay used, the types of bricks produced. Last materials were the natural stones, which is either sedimentary rocks or metamorphic stones. That's all for the materials used in Nepal and Tibet architecture. This is again April Estabilio reporting. Back to you, Chester. Thank you, April. Next on our topics for today is the Nepal and Tibet architecture building types. Here's Tank Storm to give us this story. Yes, Chess, here are some details about the styles of Nepal and Tibet architecture. The ancient architecture of Nepal can be broadly classified into three different styles. The first one is the Pagoda style. Pioneered by ancient Nepalese craftsmen, this style of architecture traveled to other parts of the world like China and Tibet via Nepalese artisans only later. The pagoda style of architecture features prominently in the structures of ancient Nepalese shrines and temples. With multiple shares of roofs arranged in ascending order from top to bottom, supported by intricately carved wooden struts, the protruding windows are characterized by lattice architecture, which has a crisscross pattern originally made of gold and alloys such as brass and bronze. This style is believed to have originated somewhere around the beginning of the 13th century. The next style is the stupa style. Monuments based on this style of architecture of Nepal has a typical hemispherical dome shape with a pyramid-like structure on top and a square base. Some stupa monuments have Buddhist chanting or theologies carved beautifully on them, while some are built to preserve the relics of Buddha and his disciples. Believed to have been introduced by Emperor Ashoka in Nepal, this style is said to represent the five elements of Buddhism, namely earth, water, fire, air, and space. The third style for Nepal is the Shikhara style. Another testimony of brilliance of the Nepalese architects of the ancient times, Shikhara means mountain peak according to Sanskrit translation, and hence the shape of a Shikhara style monument resembles a mountain peak or a pyramidal shape. Highly elaborated and intricate artworks adorn the exteriors of Shikhara style monuments or temples. Tibet has also different but quite similar architecture building types. The first one is temples and monasteries. According to Reuters, there are about more than 1,700 temples and monasteries in Tibet. Tibetan temples have flat roof and contain ashes of their incarnations of local lamas. Temples have a square or rectangular plan and are composed of three main parts, an assembly hall, ambulatory, and cells. The hall serves as meeting place and a place for worship. The ambulatory is where worshippers walk in clockwise fashion while praying. It is usually cells interior rooms filled with images of the Buddha sacred objects and brightly colored fresh coats of sacred images and scenes from the life of Buddha. The next one are the cave temples. The cave temples are also one of the Tibetan monastery architecture arts with a distinctive style. But its prevailing period was rather short and spreading region was narrow. The existing cave temples in Tibet are only two, which were built between the period of the former prosperity and the early period of the latter prosperity of Tibetan Buddhism. The Akla Lubok cave located in the east side of the Chakpur Hill, southwest of Potala Palace is the earliest pattern. Next are the Tibetan Pagodas. The pagoda architecture art is another beautiful flower in Tibetan monastery architecture art garden. Being different from the pagoda affiliated to the monastery complex, the pagoda here became the center of the monastery architectures. The pagoda architectures were prevalent in Shang region between the 14th and 15th centuries. Next are the Tibetan palace buildings. Tibetan palace buildings are places where Dalai Lama and Panchem Lama handle affairs and divided into winter palace and summer palace. 
Those palaces and Buddha Hall in temples belong to the highest level and have high similarity in Eve's decoration. However, the walls of palaces are painted in yellow and white rather than red. Next are the architectures of ancient tombs. To date among the Tibetan ancient architecture sites, the tombs are the most on the part of quality and distribution. The occurrence of Tibetan tomb architectures was closely related with the changes in the times of funeral and burial customs. Since Drigum Champo, all the successive transpos were inhumation when passed away and special architectures were built on the tombs for people to mourn for them. Lastly, architectures of local residents. Architectures of Tibetan residents are colorful and unique and varied according to regional conditions. The great variation in climate, geography, elevation between places in Tibet makes Tibetan people to build different residences with different materials and styles. Some are light structure with pure wood, some are mixed structure of wood and earth, some are heavy structure with thick earth walls, and some are movable tents with different styles. That's all for my news today. Back to you, Chester. Thanks, Tang. Now let's get to know the famous structures of Tibet and Nepal architecture. Watch Star Spirit guide us through this topic. Thanks, Chess. Now, let me introduce you to the buildings of Nepal and Tibet architecture. The first on our list is the Pashupatinath Temple. Considered to be one of Kathmandu's oldest Hindu temples, this religious site dates back to 5th century but was later renovated in the 13th century by Ananta Malya, a ruler of Malya regime. After undergoing further damage, it was rebuilt again in the 17th century with exquisite artwork and as many as 492 temples along the main temple. It is a pagoda-style architecture and is one of the holiest shrines for devotees of Lord Shiva. This temple has a dual roof which is entirely made up of gold, copper, with intricately carved wooden rafters which act as a support. Next on our list is Kathmandu Durbar Square. Durbar Square is a generic name for plazas or an area in the vicinity of a Durbar or palace. There are three Durbar Squares in Nepal and among them, the most famous one is the Kathmandu Durbar Square, also referred to as the Hanuman Doka Square. This site served as a courtyard of the royal palace in the ancient times, where the kings would be enthroned. The construction of this quadrangle dates back to the ancient times of the Chavi reign. However, it underwent renovation several times during rule of the Malias. The third on our list is the Patan Durbar Square. Another Durbar Square located in the Kathmandu Valley is the Patan Durbar Square, which is claimed to be one of the most famous tourist attractions in Nepal. Even though the history of the inception of this square is unknown, however, one common belief is that Malya rulers made most of the significant changes. The fourth on our list is the Bhaktapur Durbar Square. Bhaktapur Durbar Square, one of the three Durbars in the Kathmandu Valley, portrays a perfect picture of the rich cultural background of Nepal, especially the Nuwari community. One of the most beautiful heritage sites in Nepal, it was built by King Bhupatindra Malya during the Malya reign in the 17th century.
The next on our list is the Kastamandap Temple. Kastamandap Temple is a three-shared temple located in the Hanuman Joka Durbar Square, which dates back to the age of the Malya reign. It translates to wood pavilion and is believed to have been built for a single tree. Initially, it served as a mandapa or a podium for sacred ceremonies. However, it was later made into the temple dedicated to Saint Goranath. According to the ancient manuscripts, Saint Goranath is said to have joined a chariot procession of Manchindranath disguised as a human when he was spotted by a tantric who cursed him for a lifetime of imprisonment. However, later, it is believed that a deal was made between the two, according to which Goranath grew a sal tree, which was used by the tantric to build the temple. The sixth on our list is Changunarayan Temple. The journey to the temple of Changunarayan, who climbs through several steps through a small picturesque Nepalese village known as Narayan. The origins of this Hindu temple dates back to the 4th century AD. According to the inscriptions on a Garuda column in the temple, this temple was dedicated to Lord Vishnu, who appears as Narayana or creator of a new age. Seventh on our list, Budhanath Stupa, one of the most suspicious Buddhist shrines in Nepal. This stupa is more than 1,500 years old and attracts followers of all religions, especially Buddhism on a large scale. Legends has it, it was built by Songchen Gampu, a Tibetan king, after he unintentionally killed his father. Number 8. Namu Buddha Stupa It is one of the most sacred pilgrimage sites for Buddhists across the world. Legend has it that it was the place where Lord Buddha in his previous birth as a prince sacrificed his body to a starving tigress and her cubs and hence the site is sometimes also referred as Takmo Lujin which means tigress body generosity in Tibetan. Pilgrims believe that this stupa was built on top of the remains of Lord Buddha to celebrate his great sacrifice. Next on our list, Swayam Bunat Stupa. Considered to be the most powerful shrine for Buddhist pilgrimage, this stupa is one of Nepal's more impressive architectural marvels. Swayam Bunat means self-made. It is situated in the Kathmandu Valley and dedicated pilgrims need to climb 365 stairs to get to the top of the stupa. According to a well-known legend, the valley was once gigantic lake which grew a lotus, but later, the water dried and the lotus became the sacred Swayam Bunat Stupa. Next, Krishna Mandir. Built by King Sid Hirashinga, Malya of the Mal regime, this temple is perhaps one of the best examples of Shikahara-style architecture of Nepal. Legend has it that this temple was built as an outcome of a dream that the king had, where he visualized Lord Krishna standing in front of his palace. He then decided to build a Krishna temple that very spot. Every year in August and September, 
The temple holds Krishna and Jayanta to celebrate the birthday of Lord Krishna. Finally, Mahabuddha Temple. Mahabuddha Temple gets its name from the 1008 terracotta tiles that cover the entire temple structure. It is believed that have been constructed in the 16th century by a devotee named Abhaya Raj Shakya from Patan, who was inspired after visiting Mahabodhi Temple in India, where Lord Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment. He learned the art of making coins, and later when he was given permission to build a mint, he started constructing this temple. Due to his sudden demise, his son completed building this marvelous structure. Even today, this ancient Shikahara-style temple stands tall in small courtyard amidst the hurly-burly of the local markets. Now, let's jump into Tibet's most prominent buildings. First one, the Potala Palace. It is consisting of 13 stories with an interior space in excess of 130,000 square meters. It contains two palaces and living quarters of over 1,000 rooms, temples, stupas, and 10,000 shrines. As a museum, it houses about 200,000 statues and a wealth of national treasures. The building measures 400 meters east-west and 350 meters north-south. It has thick sloping stone walls, averaging 3 meters with up to 5 meters thick walls at the base in order to help protect it against earthquakes. It has copper poured into the foundation at its base to the south it is large and closed space with stairs and gentle slopes leading to summit and palace buildings. Next on the list, Tashi Kunpo Monastery. One of the few monasteries in Tibet to weather the stormy seas of the Cultural Revolution, Tashi Kunpo remains relatively unscotched. It is a pleasure to explore the cobbled lanes twisting around its aged buildings. Covering 70,000 square meters, the monastery is now the largest functioning religious institution in Tibet, home to around 950 monks and one of its great monastic sites. The huge golden statue of the future Buddha is the largest gilded statue in the world. The famous Jokhang Temple, or the House of the Lord, is a four-story timber complex with a gilt roof situated in the heart of Lhasa. It is the holiest site in Tibetan Buddhism and is the place where the ceremonies of initiation for the Dalai Lama and Pancham Lyamas are held. Next on the list, Sami Monastery, the first monastery in Tibet. It was built in 762 when the great Tibetan emperor Trisong Denchan ruled Tibet with the basic terms of Buddhism, Buddhist scriptures, and monks. It is the first official Buddhist monastery in Tibet. For over 1,200 years of history, it is one of the most influential monasteries in Tibet. In this monastery, there was a famous debating about Buddhism between the ancient Indian Buddhism and Chinese Buddhism. Sitting on the north facing southward, and it covers more than 25,000 square meters with the shape of a big oval. This monastery was built according to the description of universe in Buddhism scriptures. Being famous for its featured architectural structure, which combines features of Tibetan, Chinese, and Indian, Samye Monastery symbolizes the center of the universe for tourists to explore the ancient heart of Tibetan Buddhist world. Next one, the Ramoshe Temple. The sister temple to the Jokhang Temple, 
Ramoshe Temple was constructed around the same time. It was originally built to house Jowo Sakyamuni, image brought to Tibet by Princess Wencheng, but sometimes in the 8th century, the image was swapped for an image of Akshobya, brought to Tibet in 7th century as part of the dowry of the King Songchen Gampu's Nepalese wife, Princess Bhikkuti. By the mid 15th century, the temple had become Lhasa's upper tantric college. Lastly, the Palchu Monastery, the synthesis of Tibetan culture. Palchu Monastery, also called Palkor Monastery, is a typical combined building with stupa and temple, and quite different from other Tibetan monasteries in more aspects. By housing three sects of Sakyapa, Tadama, and Geluga together, it has a hard one lenient tolerance among the Tibetan sects to balance them all. Therefore, the design and layout of Palor Monastery is a synthesis of the three sects to combine different structural zakangs, enrich deities, and more integrated Tibetan Buddhist culture. Those are the buildings of Nepal and Tibet architecture. Back to you, Chester. Thank you, Tori. Now, for the last story for today is the architects of Nepal and Tibet architecture. And here's April to introduce them. April? Now, let's talk also about the Nepal and Tibet architects. First is Arniko, the greatest architect of Nepalese history. Due to confusions to translation, a mistake made by Baburam Acharya ascribed his Sanskrit name as Balabahu. He was forced to live in China where he drew great respect where he made lots of sculptural works which are still asset of China. Nepalese author Satya Mohan Joshi said about Arniko's works a really great challenge to modern engineering. Arniko was equally good at painting, sculpture, and architecture. He painted a series of portraits of Chinese emperors and impress everyone there. He gathered the title Duke of Liang by the Emperor. He married seven women from he had a total of six sons and eight daughters. Arnico was died in 1306. His famous works were White Pagoda or the Pai Taze in Beijing, Golden Stupa or a Buddhist Shrine, and Arcway of Yungtang in Nepalese style. Next architect is Bed Prasad Lohani, the first to introduce concrete structure in Nepal. He played with variety of elements in his buildings like RCC, RBC, dome, and etc. His buildings are simple, functional, and structurally stable. His works include Saraswati Sadan and Ranjana Hall. Next architect is Ganga Darbata Halabe the first Nepali architect, founder of modern architecture in Nepal, and he was born on April 13, 1936. Ganga Darbata, in 1968, himself won the first prize of RS 5000 in the Open Design Competition for the Rastriya Panchayat Bhavan. His style is modern. He is fond of repeating Frank Lloyd Wright's statement that architecture should be organic, and all organic matter must be speak and should work. His works include Hotel Salty, City Hall, Tarasatranga Shala, and Godawari Botanical Garden. Next architect is Karpucha. He is an Austrian architect. He was born on June 10, 1936. He was assigned to prepare the master plan of Kathmandu Valley, which he influenced architectural trend in Nepal made great attempts in merging his buildings into the surroundings physically while he intentionally avoided any feature suggestive of Nepali architecture, yet managed to design buildings with harmony in the place. His works include Center for Economic Development and Administ Administration Building and the Taragoan Museum. Next architect is Shankar Nath Rimal. He was born on March 1, 1935 in Tangal, Nexo. He graduated from Calcutta University in 1957. 
He started as an assistant engineer in the public works department. He is an engineer who designed the Shadid Gate in 1958, just a year after finishing his BE from Calcutta University. He was also instrumental in the in standardization of the Nefar Nefali flag in geometrical proportion in accordance with classical proportions as prescribed in the manuscript. He was also displayed his skills in other specialized fields such as structural details, drawing and landscape design. He is currently involved in the research of architecture of Nepalese temples and planning to publish two books on the subject soon. His works include the Shahid Gate, the Everest Hotel, and the Royal Nepal Academy. Next architect is Robert Weiss, a Swiss architect. He came in Nepal in 1957 on a two-year assignment with the Swiss assistant for the Ministry of Art Agriculture. Starting from humble designs of cheese factories, gadons, and staff quarters, he progressed to various private projects, which included designs for the royal family, as well as the master plan of the Tribhuvan University complex, the design of its library building and science block. His works was in blend between traditional and modern. He introduced the design of double flight stairs. He has a son named Kai Weiss, a, Nep a Nepali national of Swiss origin, who is also an architect and has been working in various capacities as a UNESCO consultant and advisor, advisor to UNESCO Office of Kathmandu since 2004. His works include Delanapurna, Fishtail Lodge, and Hotel Mala. Benjamin Polk. He is an American designer and architect and also a musician best known for his work in India and Nepal. He was born on May 18, 1916 and died on April 23, 2001. He designed and constructed more than 50 projects during this time. He practiced architecture in San, Franci San Francisco from 1948 to 1952 where he met his wife, wife Emily Despain. His notable works include the Times of India Main Building, Buddhist Trip Tripitaka Library in Nangun, the Royal Palace for His Majesty the King of Nepal, Kathmandu, and Jalianwala Bag Memorial in Amritsar. He was the author of several books, primarily concerning architecture, most notably the Buddhist monastic architecture in Sri Lanka and the India Notebook. His works include Narayan Hiti Royal Palace, Jalianwala Bag, and the Laboratory School. Next architect is Bibuti Mansin. He was the chief architect of technical interface. He graduated from the West Pakistan University of Engineering and Technology. His work His first work as an architect was designing a campus in Suket. Since then, among his innumerable work are the Park Village Resort in Budanil Kanta, the Club Himalayan in Nagargot, the Himalayan Bank in Birganj, and commercial buildings in Bainsapati. His works include Hotel Dwarika in Batispotali, the Club Himalaya Nagargot, and the Park Village Resort in Budanil Kanta. The last architect is Gats Hagmuller. He is an Austrian architect. He has now been living in Nepal for almost 35 years. Although he spent 35 years in Nepal in preservation of heritage, his professional work was in peak during the period of 1986 to 1997 as chief architect and project coordinator of the Patan Durbar Conservation and Museum Project. For his contribution in preservation of natural heritage, he was awarded the Gorkha Dakshin Bahu by King Berendra in 2001 and the honorary title of professor by the Austrian architect. His works include the Patan Museum and the Garden of Dreams at Kaiser Mahal Tamil. That's the architects uh, during Nepal and Tibet architecture. This is April Estabilio reporting. Back to you, Chester.
I think, that wraps up today's Architecture Daily Updates. Tune in again next time to your daily dose of architecture facts and knowledge. Until next time, thank you and good day!